tough guy. He's not soft like David Pollock, the ESPN college football analyst. He's not a tough guy. David joins us now. Good morning, David. Happy New Year. How are you, buddy? Happy New Year. Doing great, brother. When's the last time last time uh, you were in a fight? Uh, oh, that's easy. When I was when I was a football player, uh, I got a fight almost every single day of practice of every practice of my Georgia career. <laughs> it was a uh, it was a very consistent theme, and it was uh, it was not. You look back on it now, and you probably would change the way you acted, maybe a little bit. But I was way too hyper competitive, and uh, I got in a lot of fights in practice. How about a non football fight? I've never been in a non football fight in my life. So I've never had anybody ask to do a shot with me, Dan. That's the problem. I guess I needed somebody to, to do a shot with me. But no, I've never been in a fist fight off, uh, off of the football field in my life. So well, that's kind of it's kind of crazy. At least Tom Rinaldi could have done a shot with you before he left to go to Fox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim, Timmy and shots would be a fun experience, probably. You'd probably get asked why a lot of what's going on in your life. All right. Um, Urban Meyer to Jacksonville. I know just rumor speculation. If you were him, what would you do? Well, I mean, if you want to coach and you and you have that itch to scratch and they're going to pay me how much? Like five, six million dollars a year. I mean, if I'm him, then um, I could see it making a lot of sense. I just don't. I, I think Urban Meyer is a home run in any university and any college. He's already proven that. And but I just NFL is a different ball game. It's It's different clientele you're dealing with grown men and you don't necessarily control them as much as you control college kids and control everything so listen Jacksonville's set up for success dude it's I mean all that money they have in free agency they got the number one pick they got two first round picks two second round picks. I mean they're they're loaded it's a, it's a great destination to be in um, you're gonna get Trevor Lawrence with the number one pick one of the most talented quarterbacks we've seen in a long time so it would make sense for him I wouldn't bet on him being a successful NFL coach and turning that thing around and going and winning Super Bowls, but I would at the college ranks, wherever he goes, I would say he's going to win. Are you completely sold on Trevor Lawrence being the number one overall pick? Let's say Urban goes to Jacksonville and you got Justin Fields there who you coached. You watched that game. So you sold on uh, Trevor Lawrence being no, no doubt number one overall. I mean, if you just watch that game, you'd go, Justin Fields, holy cow, he's the number one pick, right? Like, that's, yeah. that's the best guy on the planet, especially showing the toughness, checking the football down. If you go back and watch a couple of games throughout the season with Indiana and Northwestern, I was like, who is this guy? I mean, Justin Fields started the season. After the first two games, Dan, I was like, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence are neck and neck. They are right next to each other. And I, I got looked at it like I was crazy. And then the next three or four games happened, and I was crazy. And then – you see yesterday or the other day with the uh, the Sugar Bowl, and you're like, holy cow, like this guy's unbelievable. So I think that um, when you look at when you look at fields, he can throw the football accurately. He's big, he's strong, he's tough. He doesn't see things as fast as I would like to. Um, but Trevor Lawrence is he he's very, very special because you you just forget he's six six and he can throw over top of everybody. And he's two thirty, he can break tackles and he's you know four six speed and he can run. So I think I think he's got all the gifts. Now, listen, I will say this. I don't think Clemson maximized his gifts. Like, they didn't do it. They don't – I don't know how well he throws over the middle of the field, Dan. Like, I would love to be able to say Trevor can make all the throws, but he doesn't throw over linebackers between safeties. That offense is a perimeter, perimeter-oriented offense. It spits it out. It's a lot of screens. So, if you look at bit, height, weight, speed – um, intangibles, flowing locks, great hair. Like he's got, he checks a lot of boxes. So I think, I think he'll be the number one pick and I think he'll be very successful. I had an NFL scout who watched the Notre Dame game and he said the following Notre Dame still doesn't have perimeter speed to cover. And that's the big issue here. Um, you know, the offense is – they were trying to, you know, establish the running game and keep the offense off the field. They, they had a game plan, but the scout said, you know, you you got to have perimeter speed, and it's, it's a glaring weakness with Notre Dame. So is that all that is separating Notre Dame from, you know, Clemson or Alabama or Ohio State? A hundred percent. That's it. That, that's all. Like when they got destroyed in 2012, Brian Kelly changed the way he recruited and changed the way he focused. And he got the line of scrimmage great. By the way, their offensive line, Notre Dame, okay, I'll give you at, at the lowest three in the country, third best in the country, mauling people, great up front, physical, um, smart, picks up blitzes, great at everything. But you watch Devontae Smith, and, and he throws a simple bubble route. 
By the way, Dan, if they were playing two-hand touch football, Devontae Smith still would have scored three <laughs> touchdowns and had one in 35 yards. Like, they, they were not even close to fast enough, quick enough on the perimeter. That's the missing components. They need speed on defense at corner in the skill spot. They need wide receivers that can go. I mean, look at McKinley. He's a great big body, 6'4", 230. He can't run. Yeah. Skarnecki is a great big body. He's not separating from anybody. So – you, you have the play calling ability. You have the line of scrimmage now taken care of. But now you need some dudes, some straight dudes that can fly. That's the that's the one lacking component for Notre Dame. Are you sold on Devontae Smith next level? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he, he's as good as you've seen, man. Yeah, it's, but it's we've dominant. had rugs before. And I don't I don't know. It feels like there is that Alabama receiver. And he does have that burst. Like there's something about him when he – he gets around the corner, and then he just does something that is completely different than anybody else that I've seen in a long time. He's he's like Anthony Carter at Michigan. Like he's thin, he's really small, yeah, he's thin. but you know they can they can bully you around in the NFL. So I, I don't I, know. I, think, I will say this about that: I, I do think you can get bullied in the NFL, but now you're starting to see so much so many systems that protect you from that and yeah. stacking wide receivers behind each other. I see my comparison for him is Marvin Harrison. I think he's because his his routes are exceptional. He catches, he's not big, but he catches 50-50 balls really big. He catches come he comes back to the football. He's great after the catch, and his routes are very precise. I wouldn't have told you that about Ruggs a year ago. I'll tell you, Ruggs can flat fly. He can run as well as anybody in the country, but he wasn't as detailed in his routes as a guy like Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, I think. Is a, is a home run. Now, listen, Jerry Judy was too, but Jerry Judy's with Drew Locke in Denver. I mean, your situation definitely dictates how well you can be, but he's definitely a guy. He's a top 10 pick in the NFL, and I, and I think he could do some damage in the right system. But I also wondered about this, though, David. When you're trying to assess, like Tua, you know, I, I see Tua with the Dolphins, and he feels a little exposed, whereas Joe Burrow, I was curious if he was going to be exposed not having those weapons in Cincinnati – uh, you know, Justin Herbert with, with the Chargers yep. trying to assess how good a quarterback is. Like, I don't know how good Mac Jones is. I, I know yep. that they, he's got a great running back. Uh, it got, got some open receivers there. I don't, I think it's really hard for these scouts to look at some of these, like Dwayne Haskins at Ohio State. He had one year, and I could have yep. hit some of those wide receivers, I think, in the game against Michigan. So, I don't know how you can assess somebody for the next level based off of the talent around them. And that's, that, that's the hardest part. Like the hardest part is understanding that just like Justin Herbert, I think is the best example you mentioned because Justin Herbert played in a scheme that sucked. And, and, and by the way, <laughs> you, you look at, you, you look at Justin Herbert. He is, he, he is just like Trevor Lawrence, a, including the hair, like big, tall, strong, athletic. You watch him throw a football and you're like, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. And then you watch the system and how it was built and how it was created. And you're like, no, this is an awful system. They don't let him play free. They don't let him um, be him and, and make those big time throws, make big time reads. He goes to the NFL and he kills. It. That's the hardest part is comparing systems and what you're working with. I mean, you look at Tua, he had four first round picks. You can throw Waddle and Smith in there now with Judy and Ruggs. Yeah, we can complete a lot of those passes, Dan, and, and look really good. But I'll tell you the one thing that's different to me about Mac Jones, Mac Jones' pocket presence and accuracy is pretty stupid. Like, he is not an athlete. And, and he'll tell you that, by the way. He'll tell you I'm not very athletic. But he slides, he goes through his progressions, and I love the way he checks it down. Tua, the one worry I had about Tua was he played in an all-RPO-based system. It was all RPOs, and he's really good at it. You don't live on that in the NFL. Joe Burrow played quarterback like an NFL quarterback. Like, so – and then Herbert played in a system that was was terrible, and I didn't love watching it. So, yeah, it, it's ex exceptionally difficult to do it. Uh, if I don't talk to you before the national title game, Ohio State will win because of what? Justin Fields and that offense being who they were in the bowl game, like what we already saw. They, they have the – by the way, when we were going through Clemson, Ohio State, Clemson, Ohio State, like I was like – Ohio State better on the offensive line. Ohio State better at receiver. Like Ohio State, they have all these checks and all these all this athleticism on the offensive side of the football. Justin Fields just wasn't using it. If Justin Fields plays like that, 
we're in for a heck of a showdown. He just has a tendency to play different than that and more aggressive and make more mistakes and not see things as clearly. But um, if he plays like that, then we're going to see the, you know, we've already graduated by the way, like college football is (laughs) college football is now college football has gone to, it's basically Madden except for we put it on the exhibition mode. We don't put it on all Madden anymore. Defenses stink. Like it's so hard to get stopped because there's so much speed. There's so much cheating by the offense because you're allowed to block downfield and all this garbage I'll get into <laughs> another time. But um, so offense, I think you're looking at, if he plays similar to that, we're looking at a high scoring 40 something to 40 something entertaining game. Great appearance as always, David, we appreciate uh, you joining us as always. Happy new year. And, uh, and we'll hopefully talk to you soon. Happy new year, Dan. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you, buddy. That's David Pollock, a former Cincinnati Bengal uh, first round pick. David will be on site uh, college game day in Miami. It uh, will be the national title game, Alabama, Ohio State. That's next Monday, January 11th.